Let's move on to duplicating objects. Now, under the Tools menu here, there's a bunch of different ways of duplicating objects. Mirrors, arrays, um, spacing tools. We're actually going to go over a few of those. Not all in intro, but a few. Uh, but under Edit, there's a thing called Clone. And that's the most basic way of uh, duplicating an object, is just to clone it. And you can have, you have some uh, options when you clone an object. You can clone it as a copy, an instance, or a reference. And there's su a subtle difference between instance and reference. A copy is just a pure copy. So if I hit copy and hit OK, now I have a copy of that object. Okay, and I can hit delete to get rid of that. Now, a slightly easier way to clone, and the way that I do it most of the time, is if I'm in a move, rotate, or scale mode, I can actually, by holding down shift and drag, immediately make a copy of that object. And then when you do that, you actually get, you can make a, a certain number of copies that way. So it can be an easy way to make a number of transform, immediately transformed um, copies of an object. Okay, so if I uh, take this, hold down shift, drag, let go, one copy, that's fine. Now, if I make this thing a copy, what each one of these things is completely independent of the other one. So I hit OK. If I tapered this thing, it's completely independent of that uh, the original. So that's a, a copy. Now, if I take this and shift, drag, and make it an instance, OK. Now, when I add that same... Uh, taper operation. Now you can see there's a little gizmo drawn around both of these things. So when I taper one, the other one tapers as well. They're an instance. They are, you know, for all intents and purposes, the same object. Uh, they can just have, it's just a, a literal clone of it. It can have a different, it can have a different, completely different transform. So I can move it around. I can even actually scale it and rotate it completely independently of the original. But any operations that I do here in the stack uh, or to the original mesh of it are going to get propagated to the instance. Okay, so if I take that, and let's say I don't like that taper, uh, or actually let's leave the taper on. Now I'm going to make a new uh, uh, copy of it. So I'm going to shift drag, and let's say, now this time I'm going to make it an instance and click OK. Or excuse me, a reference and click OK. Now, this referenced object is going to share all of the uh, parameters of the original, so it has the taper mesh on there, but the referenced object, now I can add new modifiers to it uh, without influencing the original one. So if I come down and add a melt modifier to it, and then I, uh, and then I melt this object, the original one doesn't melt. However, if I change the taper in either one, the taper is going to affect both of them. So a reference just allows you to have all of the the original modifiers, but add new modifiers on top of that that don't get propagated back to the original object. Now, modifiers can also be copy and pasted between objects. So if I have this spiral staircase with a taper with specific settings that I worked out that I really like, I can take that taper and copy that taper, and I can pick some new object and paste it. I can paste it in one of two ways. I can just paste it normally, and it's going to paste that entire modifier on there as it was with the spiral staircase. So even the size of the gizmo and the center and everything like that. So you can see it's a, quite a huge taper there. Okay, so I can paste that on there as it was originally, or, or by deleting that modifier, I can paste it as instanced now what's going to happen is whatever changes I make to either the new modifier or the original modifier of that taper are going to get propagated to every single instance of the modifier. So it can get a little bit confusing. You can have instances of things, but then also individual instances of modifiers. And you know it's an instance because the modifier is italicized here. So if the modifier is italicized, it means an instance. Plus, when I pick it, you'll see something else, some other um, gizmo highlight in the scene. But if you can't see it, you'll know it's an instance by if it's italicized. Now you can uh, remove instances either by right-clicking and you say Make Unique, or there's a little button here that does the same thing. Right here, this button will make it unique. So it'll take that modifier, and now it's not italicized. So now if I make changes to that original modifier, the other one is not updating and reflecting that. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Now this gets really useful when you have 
a whole lot of geometry that needs to be duplicated. But you don't want to just straight clone it because, uh, you know, or make just a copy of it. Because if I were to make a copy of it, any changes that I, maybe it's all similar geometry and it's supposed to be similar. So if I change one, I want all of the others to change in the case of this. So in the case here, all of these are actually instances of each other. And so I can tell that because it's the bottom of the stack here is bold. If the stack is bold faced, it means it is an instance of something else. And it doesn't really matter which one of these I pick to make the changes to it. All of everything will update um, accordingly. So if I take here, I made all of these little um, tiles here with just a tube and with slice on. And so it's sliced in a particular way. If I wanted those slices to be, go a little bit further, a little bit less, then I can change the original parameters of it, and you can see all of them are changing. Well, I don't really want that. Let's say one really uh, common thing would be is if I created, um, if, I, if I wanted slightly more or less number of sides. If I had too few sides, these might start to get chunky. See how they would be a little bit too chunky. So I might need to increase the, the resolution of them in order for them to seem smooth. And you notice that they all are updating. So if I increase the resolution of them, but I had 18 sides, and that might be a little bit too much. It's just as important having enough sides as, you know, being aware of trying to not have too many sides as it is to have enough. Because if I have too many sides, now all of a sudden I have a lot more triangles, no more polygons that I have to render, and my render time isn't going to be quite so good. So maybe if I just eyeball this, I could actually take this down to eight sides and they'd be okay. But what's great is that I'm updating all of them all at one time and I'll be able to get a much more efficient render in this way uh, with just one little operation. Now each one of those is an instance of each other, but if I grab the, the transform gizmo here and hold shift and drag a new version of it down, I can call this one a reference of that original ones. And what this allow me to do is take this and add something like a noise uh, modifier on top of this. And then I can take that noise modifier, make some changes to it, give it some strength in X, Y, and Z. Noise modifier is incredibly um, useful. Take the scale down, and what I can do is I can warble this a little bit, add a little bit of noise to it so it's not quite so perfect, right? Um, and it's not going to be affecting all those other ones. So like maybe I just make a few of these that are kind of jacked up and I want to intersperse those throughout. And uh, so I don't want to, but I don't want to affect all of them. Not all of them are going to be, you know, have, have uh, a bunch of noise on them. You know, but then if I took this and duplicated that, uh, then each one of these, whatever noise I did to it, uh, the other one would get the exact same noise. And so they might, again, start to look a little too similar. So what I could do is pick all of these and add a noise modifier to all of them. You can add modifiers to more than one thing at one time as well. So if I want to pick these, I could go in and start picking one, you know, hold down control, pick all of these things. Um, but there's however many there are, 30 some odd, 40, whatever. It might take a little while to do that. Now 3D Studio provides this select by name dialog box, which is incredibly handy. And this is where that naming convention for you is really going to pay off. So if I pick one, I can see I named them well. So I named them terracotta tile 1 through 31 or whatever. So if I go under select by name, this new dialog is going to pop up. And I can just start typing a name. And it's going to show me everything that contains that name or pick for me everything that contains that name. So I can click OK, and I've got them all picked. All right, and then I can go in and add a noise modifier to all of them. And you can see that noise modifier now is one huge modifier, so that if I add noise to it, let's add noise in Z and take the scale of it way down, you can see it's uh, adding noise to all of them as a whole. And so it's a nice kind of little way to break the monotony of some um, of a whole bunch of pieces. And if you pick one of them, you see that it's what it is, is it becomes an instanced modifier. So the noise is italicized, meaning that it's instanced, kind of like I did before with the little cylinder. So when I change the noise on any one of these, it'll change the noise that affects all of them. Now, if any time I had a selection, a more complex selection, like I just had a second ago, which uh, started out with uh, 
all the terracotta tiles, I clicked OK. If I wanted to get all of them selected again very quickly for any reason, that's pretty quick. Uh, but what I can also do is I can come up here to this Name Selection Sets box and just type in a name. And now when I have a name selection set, if I click on the little combo box here, I can click on it and it will automatically select all of those tiles. So I can create any any number of name selection sets um, and then come in here to the name selection set editor at any time. And you see here's the sets, there's the members of that set. So if I wanted to get rid of it, I could delete it, uh, add to it, subtract from it. So selection sets is a, is a powerful way to quickly pick uh, complex selections in your scene.